Okay, so the roof system is uh, consisting of a structural element which supports the roof covering. So the structural elements be be trusses, portals, beams, slab, shells, or domes. So roof covering may be AC sheets, GI sheets, wooden shingles, tiles, RCC slabs, and others. Wood shingles are roof, uh, wood shingles are roof shingles made of cut wood used for roofing material. Roofing material. So there are also other available type of uh, roofing materials or roof sheets that can be uh, procured uh, in the market. So uh, these uh, roof sheets sometimes you can procure asphalt shingles. You can procure a uh, 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 porcelain tiles, uh, roof sheets. Okay, so there are different types of materials and there are different methods to install those different types of roofing. And uh, the requirements uh, of a roof, uh, it should have adequate strength and stability to carry superimposed loads. So, so it should carry its own load and the load or the person that is walking above the roof in case there will be a person uh, to walk above the roof, it should carry that person. Okay, so the, the roof system should have an adequate strength to carry uh, a live load, no? uh, a, a minimum amount, amount of live load above the roof. So protect the building against rain, sun, and wind. No? So it should, it should uh, be the skin of the, the top skin of the building or the, the, uh, the residence. No? So it should pre it should protect the, the, unit, the owners from from the rain, from the exposure to sun, and from the heavy winds, so, and other and other uh, uh, what you call these uh, uh, factors or, or environmental uh, factors that may affect the man-made or man-made uh, factors that may affect the you know, the, the building habitats. So, so so it should be weatherproof and should have a efficient drainage arrangement. So. That is, that is one main. Uh, this is the one, one main uh, uh, purpose of the roof. It should be watertight and waterproof, so that uh, there will be no leaks, no or no water leaks going inside the building from the roof. So, uh, in case of uh, heavy rains, uh, this is one uh, problem that uh, the building owners encounters, which is the 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 heavy rain pour, rain pour and the heavy rain pour uh, goes to the uh, roofing system and the roof should have a watertight you know, uh, installation so that there will be no uh, dripping of water or uh, penetration of water inside the building. So it should provide also adequate thermal insulation. When we say about thermal insulation, it's about the exposure to sunlight. So sunlight emits heat no and heat transfers to the roofing sheets no? in case if it's a metal roofing sheets it will transfer the metal roofing sheet will transfer the the heat to the purlins if it's metal or wood it will transfer the heat to the purlins then to the rafters then to inside of inside the interstitial space of the ceiling and then to the roof so if you you must provide adequate insulation thermal insulation to the, to the roofing system so that it will lessen or minimize the penetration of heat. Or it can be fire resistant. No? The roofing should be a fire resistant, but you should have a fire resistant material. And another characteristic of a roof should provide insulation against sound. No? So in case there will be heavy rainfall, you can you should have a enough uh, in sound insulation should, so that you cannot you will minimize the the sound from the rain uh, uh, on the roof. Okay, so another uh, another uh, sound that another uh, uh, natural uh, uh, factors that uh, affects the roof is the wind. No, sometimes the wind uh, creates create a humming effect on the roof. No, so you should you should uh, uh, insulate uh, with uh, acoustic insulation so that you will not hear the humming sound on the roof. So, what are the different elements of a roof? When designing a roof, the following points should be considered in relation to its final appearance. Number one is the steep of the or the pitch of the roof. 
the greater the roof area will be visible. So the steeper the pitch, the greater the roof area will be visible. So if you were you will incline the pitch of the roof, you no, know, uh, steeper, so it will be visible from the outside. You know? So it will create a good. Uh, uh, if the design is good, it will create a, a, a nice aesthetics, you no, know, or a good. Uh, uh, composition, architectural composition to the exterior of your building. Okay. So the, the pitch of the roof, if it's uh, steeper, it will result in large roof space. No? So if you are you have a steep pitch roof, you will uh, you will create a large uh, uh, roof space compared to the flat uh, area. You can also use smaller cladding units such as plain tiles and slate. No? In, uh, in roofing material, you can, you can uh, use uh, small, no? small cladding like roof tiles, asphalt shingles, no? uh, wood shingles. So pitch roof are most suitable in countries where there is a high rainfall. So if your country is like in the Philippines where it's we have two seasons, which is a uh, wet and dry. So during the wet season, there will be anticipated uh, heavy rains. So you need to make sure that there will be no flooding on your roof. So you need to make to design the roof with a steeper pitch. No? And uh, the coverings, materials for roof, should harmonize with the local surroundings. No? So you can, you need to to uh, look at the surroundings and design the roofing system to harmonize with the architectural designs of the surroundings. Uh, this material should fit the purpose and the ability to keep out elements, thermal insulation, durability, and appearance. So another characteristic of the roof, it should be it should be durable. No? It should should uh, should be should uh, it should be uh, designed properly so that it will last for a long time and the appearance should uh, be aesthetically correct. Okay, so in we have a different we have uh, several types of roof designs. We have the flat roof. It is suitable for buildings in plain or in hot regions where rainfall is moderate and where snowfall is not uh, a bit, it's not there. No? So the the flat roof, there are several uh, disadvantages, like uh, there will potential leakage on the area of the drain if you will design the flat roof where the drain will be located in the center. So the proper way to design a roof flat is to create roof drainage in several areas that is sloping to the edge you know, of the uh, roof surface. So you should create a slope towards the edge of the building and put what you call these downspouts you know, or floor drains in the edge of the uh, slab or the flat roof. Okay. So as you can see in the design that you can see in the pictures uh, on the PowerPoint, yeah, there is a design of a building showing that it's made of flat, flat roof and the design of flat roof harmonize with the aesthetical composition of the exterior of the building. You, know? you can see the vertical and the horizontal lines of the building harmonizing with the flat roof. Okay, <clears throat> okay so the flat roof is the most economical roof to build and it adds little to the design of the most houses it requires a build-up or membrane roof covering. So in order to <clears throat> prevent a uh, leak or to make it watertight or waterproof or water resistant, the roof should have a good you know, or a excellent waterproofing or membrane roof covering. Okay, so you need to select the right waterproofing material for your roof covering. Another one, this is the shed roof. Shed roof is a sloping roof having slope 
only in one direction. As you can see in the architectural design of this uh, residence, he used the slope roof as one of the architectural composition of his design. So he emphasized the slope of the roof you know, in the facade and emphasized it structurally in the design. So the slope, the shed roof can be part, you know, can, can create a, uh, uh, a, a appealing aesthetic, you know, as appealing exterior of the building. So it will it uh, it uh, it admits more light inside the rooms no, or inside the residence. This is very uh, applicable in areas where there is cold climates when you need to have a a large exposure to sunlight. No? In the Philippines, we are we are in a tropical country. We don't want uh, so much sun exposure. Okay, so uh, we need we need uh, we need shades. No to prevent the ex exposure to, to direct sunlight. So, so in this design, this is, this is uh, uh, not so much. No? This, this is, you, can, you can use this shed roof, but not too much steep. No? So it can be used in the Philippines. <clears throat> so another one is the gable roof. The gable roof is a sloping roof, having slope in two directions. No? Uh, as you can see in the design, they, the designer uh, uh, incorporated the gable roof you know, into the exterior of the building. He extended the the roof eaves you know, to the wall, you know, to the vertical wall of the facade, you know, creating a arc, arc, uh, pyramidal arc, you no, know, or triangular arc in the facade. You no, know, so emphasizing the entrance for the windows. You know. So this is another. Uh, method to that you can use in your design composition using a gable roof. On the upper right part is a more traditional gable roof application on a two-story residence. Okay? So uh, this is another type of roof which is heap roof. It's a sloping roof having slope in four direction. As you can see in the design, it has a ridge and a four uh, sloping roof you know, going to all four directions of the roofing system. So you can attach another heap roof and combine other type of uh, roofings, roofing uh, uh, designs on the heap roof to create a more uh, uh, interesting you know, or, or, more, or creating solution to the irregular shape of your plants. You know? So uh, using a, what you call this, a heap roof, and combining with a gable or combining it with another heap roof can create, can solve your solution if you have an irregular shape floor plan. Okay, so and the heap roof is slightly more difficult to build. Uh, it is popular, it is a popular choice, no, but doesn't provide ventilation as well as some designs. Because in in uh, as you can see, the heap roof. It's more applicable on countries which is tropical because all of the sides are with shades. No? Uh, if you will notice the, the shed type roof, when, it's, when, when one side is open to the direct sunlight, this heap roof, it protects all sides from direct sunlight. It creates shades. No? So it, uh, and it will uh, and, and it create uh, a, uh, what you call this, a, a, a more efficient drainage system because all a, all uh, areas have what you are uh, gutters and uh, downspouts. This is another type of roof, which is a gumbrel roof. No, a gumbrel roof is a sloping roof having slope in two direction with a break in the slope. As you can see in the design, the gumbrel roof is often used in barns in the US in the United States but they are they are now reviving the gambler roof in the, in the classical homes no in in the United States so this is a classical home no a a residence in the in the uh, suburbs and they use dormer windows as part of the gambler roof no these are dormer windows and it is part of the design no? part of the design and part of the ventilation and uh, 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 
uh, exposure to sunlight for the attic or the uh, second floor of the building. Another, this is a gambler roof is sometimes called a barn roof because it has been used extensively on barns. It provides additional headroom in the attic. Now, this is the mansard roof. A mansard roof is a sloping roof having slope in four direction with a break, you know? So it is a, it is a, a, a uh, what you call this, a, uh, a roofing system, you know, that uh, is commonly used in, uh, in countries, in European countries, you know? You can see the, the Cambria roof in this, uh, 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 illustration or picture that the, the Gambra roof uh, is, uh, on top of a uh, classical, you know, a classical uh, uh, building. You know? uh, I think it's a new classical building, but the, the building is uh, 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 the Gambra roof has uh, what you, dormer windows, you no? Know? Because the the mansard the mansard roof is has dormer windows because the upper part of the roof can be attics, you no? Know? And these attics have should have a ventilation or natural light, so they you put mansard windows. So the, the mansard roof is like a hip roof with a brick. No, it's like a hip roof. No? Okay, so, so the most mansard roof is a French design no? in, and it's more difficult to construct than the hip or gable roof. Another type of roof is the folded plate roof. The folded plate roof has a limited use in single family homes. Modular prefabricated units are available. So this is a, this is a, uh, this is more used in uh, multi-family dwellings or in townhouses because you can divide you know, each uh, folded plate into one unit. You know? So let's say this is one unit, this is another unit, and this is another unit. So you can create multi-unit dwellings for folded plate groups. But the main problem is the drainage because you will have a what you call this inside cutter Know, in this type of system and this inside gutter should be designed properly so that the water coming from this side of the roof and this side of the roof will not overflow on the inside gutter okay another one is the dutch hip roof so that hip roof is a a basically a hip roof with a small gable at either end so gables can be used for ventilation and it can also be used as windows for the attic, okay? And it can be used for as a architectural design. So you can you can uh, possibly see this type of designs in building in the southern part of the Philippines, maybe in uh, Mindanao area, which is the uh, commonly uh, apply this type of roof design. Another one is the wing. No, this is the wing roof. No, the wing gable is especially, especially essentially a gable roof extended at the peak so this is a wing you no know, gable type roof you know? so they extend the the uh the gable and shape it like a wing so this is also common in areas like in Sambuanga, in uh, otobato they use this wing gable in their uh, uh what you call this uh uh, restaurants, their airport, no, they use this wing gable design. And uh, another one is the butterfly roof. No? So the butterfly, butterfly roof is like the folded uh, roof, uh, sawtooth roof, uh, but the main, uh, it provides light and ventilation, but the drainage is the problem. No? It, it, it's good in very, very good in uh, uh, accepting no? light from the outside and ventilation, but the drainage will be the problem in the middle part of the inside gutter. The A-frame roof is uh, provides a roof and a wall for the structure. So this is, it's popular for cottages, homes, churches, and other structures. So this is very popular in churches because you can create a, a high ceiling in the middle part of the building or the structure. And this high ceiling can, can uh, Great psychological uh, effect on the users that they they uh, they are not claustrophobic you know, inside the, the the structure because of the a frame roof and you can also provide designs you know, on the a frame ceiling 
So this A-frame roof is also used in uh, other parts in the northern part of the Philippines where in the, count, the temperature is very cold because the insulation, the A-frame roof, will during the daytime will absorb the heat from the the uh, sunlight and during the night time the, the heat absorbed in the roof will become the heating element for the interior side of the uh, building okay, so this, this that is why they use the a frame roof you know, in the uh, northern part where is the, there is a cold area cold uh, temperature uh, another type is the curved roof panel is similar to the folded plate roof in style and application it's available in prefabricated module so this curved roof panel is also used uh, in individual curves no? Na, and sometimes it's made of uh, most of the time it's made of concrete this curved roof and most of the time the problem is the drainage in the valley of the curve okay? or the inside cutters the, these are the important technical terms no? in a uh, uh, in the roof we have what you call this the the ridge the highest point or the line of a sloping roof where the two opposite slopes meet, meet it's known as the ridge this is the topmost part of the roof which is the ridge the ridge piece the horizontal piece of timber which runs the highest level of a sloping roof is called the ridge piece and the lowest edge of the surface of a sloping roof is called the eaves no so this is the roof eaves that is this is the lowest part we have the eaves, eaves boards which is also known as the fascia board no? and th this one supports the gutter of the roofing system we have also the rafters which is the members which supports the covering material of a sloping roofs this is these rafters are often uh the materials that the paralins are attached into or the battens depending on the type of a roofing that you will use the hip is the line of extension of the sloping surface of a roof forming an external angle exceeding 180 degrees is known as the hip so the upper part is the ridge so if you have a what you call this a, a additional angle roofing on the ridge then you will call that a hip so the there is also what you call the hip rafter, like the ridge rafter. Then the valley is the intersection of two sloping surfaces of a roofing form an external angle known as uh, less than 180 degrees is known as the valley. So this is the valley that where this the water of the uh, sloping roof meets. No? Then in the valley you will put a valley gutter, okay, or an inside gutter. <clears throat> so this is the uh, this is a a a, big, uh, a drawing of a different components of a roof. No, so you can see this is the dormer, and this is the sofa, which is the eaves. No, uh, and this is the rake, which is the what you call this the uh, fascia. Uh, this is the valley. No, when you have valley gutter, this is also a valley. This is the hip, and this is the ridge. So the ridge is the topmost part of a looping slope, and the second uh, additional uh, 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 angle is called the hip. Okay. So this is another uh, uh, illustration showing the different part, but this emphasizes the dormer window. You can see the dormer window is the is uh, almost seen in. Uh, in the few of our few examples, they, we have seen uh, most of them has dormer windows. So there are different ways to create dormer windows like the above illustration. So as you can see uh, the, in this illustration, you can see the dormer windows have double rafter. The double rafter act as a uh, uh, additional support to carry the, the dormer window. So if you will be building a dormer window, add an additional rafter so that it will properly carry the weight, additional weight of the dormer window. So you can create other designs like this one and create a, a other designs like this one. So now we will talk about the material that is what we call steel. No? Steel is an alloy of, of iron and carbon containing less than 
2% cardboard, and 1% manganese, and a small amount of silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and oxygen, and steel is the world's most important engineering and construction material. So the basic product of a steel mill, such as plate, section, and bars, you can create them to a fabricated beam, girder, column, struts, and ties. Okay? So there are different types of steel according to the carbon content. So we have what you call the dead mild steel, which has only less than 15% carbon. We have 0.15% uh, carbon. We have the mild steel, which is 0.15 to 0.30% carbon. We have the medium carbon steel. We have the 0.30 to 0.80 carbon. We have the card high carbon steel. We have 0.80 to 1.5 carbon. And we have the cast steel or the carbon tool steel. It's more than 1.5% carbon. So I will discuss what are the different characteristics of this steel in the next slides. So the mild steel is the ductile, malleable, more tough and more elastic than cast iron and rough iron. It is more prone to rusting than rough iron. It corrodes quickly. It's easily forged, welded, and riveted. So one characteristic of this mild steel, you can weld, you can forge, and you can rivet. It can withstand shock and impact as well. It has not much effect by solid water. It's equally strong in tension, compression, and shear. It's difficult to harden and temper. The specific gravity is 7.8. So this mild steel is the commonly used for structural sections like I section, T section, channel section, angle, iron plates, round and square rods. It's also used for MS rounds. It's used for reinforcement in the RCC. And it, mild steel is also used for tubes and used for structures. Plain and corrugated mild steel sheets are used in roofing. So the mild steel is the most common type of steel that we commonly use, the mild steel. Another one is the medium carbon. This is this has granular, granular effect, granular structure, more tough and elastic than mild steel, easier to harden or temper, and difficult to forge and to weld. Stronger in compression than in tension or in shear, and withstands shocks and vibration better. So the medium carbon steel, what are the uses for the medium carbon steel? It's used for deals, files, and chisel. So this medium carbon steel, you can use this for the nails that we use, the, the nails, so the, the concrete nails, the, the wooden nails, common wire nails. We can use the, you can use this carbon steel in hammers. You can use this carbon steel in a, a, a pail and shovel. This used for making those parts that are hard, tough, and durable, and capable of withstanding shocks and vibration. Okay? Another one is the high carbon steel. Increased tensile strength less, leads to less weight for, of being used as compared to mild steel. Structural, more structurally, more lighter, resists corrosion better, tougher and elastic, more brittle, and less ductile than mild steel used in reinforcing pre-stress concrete structures. So this is another type of material, but this material is brittle and less ductile than mild steel. So this type, then we have another, the, the, the types of steel according to elements used. No? And this one, we have already discussed what we call the carbon steel. Now, there are other material, there are other steel that uses different elements, which we call the alloys steel. Okay. The alloy steel is the, the elements that impart distinctive characteristics to the steel are added to iron to produce an alloy steel, named after the element added. So pre prepared to increase strength, hardness, toughness, resistance to corrosion, and thermal and electrical conductivities. Sometimes these alloy steel are used for electrical wirings. Sometimes the alloy steel are used for engines. They are used for manufacturing cars. They are used for manufacturing bicycles, okay? So uh, that is why you have bicycles that are very light but are tough, okay? So 
alloy spheres are divided into two categories. We have the ferrous alloys and the non-ferrous alloys. The ferrous alloys have, have the, the, the different elements like chromium, nickel, vanadium, tungsten, and so on. And these are the comparison between the cast iron, rough iron, and steel. So we discuss what are the different types of uh, uh, steel no, that you can see. Now we will discuss what are the, the, the difference in composition, melting point, hardness, and strength from cast iron, rough iron, and steel. So as you can see, the steel, the melting point is about 1300 to 1400 degrees Celsius. But the cast iron, the melting point is 1200 degrees Celsius. So it means that the melting point of the steel, no, you need a higher no, uh, uh, temperature to melt no, the, 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 the steel, no, the steel rather than the cast iron. So hardness, cannot, the steel can be hardened and tempered. The rough iron cannot be hardened or tempered and the cast iron hard, hardened and heating by sudden cooling. So in terms of compressive strength, uh, the, the strength of uh, steel is about 4.75 to 25.2 tons per square meter compared to the compressive strength of cast iron which is 6.3 to 7.1 tons. So the steel is more, you know, in compressive strength, it's more uh, rigid. You know? Another one is the ultimate tensile strength. The tensile strength of steel is about 5.51 to 11.02 tons per square meter, while the compressive strength of uh, rough iron is about 3.5 tons per square meter, 2 to 3.5 tons per square meter. So it seems that the steel has more strength than cast iron and rough iron, okay? Another one, the steel, it rusts easily, but the cast iron doesn't rust easily. So, so we use the cast iron in sewer lines, drainage lines, and uh, cast iron, we use that in other, uh, 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 other uses that are exposed to water. Uh, cast iron is brittle and cannot be welded or rolled into sheets. That's the main difference. The cast iron, you cannot weld the cast iron. But the uh, steel, no, steel you can, it's malleable, it's ductile, no? it's, it's, it can be welded. No? So it's, it, it, it can be rapidly forged or welded. So uh, this, uh, the, the rough iron, it's easily forged or welded. So you we usually use the, the steel no, in uh, in reinforcing bars, no? in in reinforced concrete bars, the deformed bars is usually made of steel, and sometimes the uh, structural frames of the building is made of steel. The rough iron we use that for certain support support steel uh, uses, like we can use the rough iron for our gates, our fences. We can use that for. Uh, 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 creating benches, creating uh, chairs, creating tables. So you can use craft iron steel because the steel, pure steel is more expensive than the rough iron. And how do we form this different type of steel? The cast iron, you, you, what you do is you melt, you melt the iron, no? you melt iron and uh, carbon, you melt it, then you cast it into a form. So you form it using a cast, you know, a form cast. The rough iron, you forge it, you, know, you hammer it to shape into a form. What you do is you, you, uh, you reach the boiling point of, or you, you, you make the iron uh, hot. So when the iron is hot or the steel is hot, you can now hammer it or forge it into different shape. So that is the rough iron. The steel is the, the, the purest form of, of uh, iron or metal or, or uh, uh, iron and carbon. So that is the steel. Okay. So you can create cast iron, rough iron from the steel by uh, melting it or by uh, forging it or hammering it to a, a different um, material. Okay. So, so this one, you can see uh, rough iron are. Uh, Used for enforcement, 
used used for making uh, members like bolt rivets and sheets cutlery you no know? uh, the cast iron is used for water pipes sewer drain pipes lamp post uh, and the uh, rough iron is uh, chains cranes hooks and railways and concrete okay so there are different uses for the different types of metals or different types of steel so we have different types of structural sections that are available for steel so we have the hot rolled section this is the hot rolled section we have the i section it's it's a letter i and we have the h section which is the plunge is equal to the the vertical uh, the, uh, the the vertical part of the i section the h section and we have the i tapered plunge this is the plunge we have the tapered plunge c plunge we have the parallel plunge and we have the equal angle and the unequal angle and the t and the flat and the square and the round so these are the different structural section this is structural section you can buy it from a mild steel or for a or a uh, rough iron so it's available rough iron or mild steel it can you can use you can buy sections uh, uh, alloy section of these uh, shapes okay another one is the cold form section this cold form section is made of flat metal sheets no so they are formed into different shapes like open section and hollow section the open section you can create equal angle and equal angle lip angle channel lip channel lip z and in the hollow section you can create circular square and rectangular so these are all made of flat sheets that are thick and then hold form into different shapes In, uh, in uh, using steel, there are different tolerances or different possibilities of or the steels that are available. So, and there are different imperfections that are can be seen on, on steel, like slight variations in member length. If you will buy a 20 foot steel uh, member or section, you will uh notice that there, there are slight differences in members length in micro millimeter or in millimeter they are not delivered on exact you know all, all, all the same exact length another one is when you buy steels with holes sometimes they have they have inaccurate location of holes and sometimes uh, the steels have out of squareness of members in the ends no? so you, you can sometimes uh, notice that there are steels that the ends is not perfect as the middle part of the the section so you need to uh, accept that there are tolerances you no know? there are you, then you should provide allowances okay uh, in in uh, in joining steels, no, you can use bolting. No, you can use bolt. No? The most me me common method in joining structural is bolting. So this bolting, you need a nut and a bolt and a flat washer. So you need to uh, what you call you need to uh, uh, specify what type of uh, what is the length of the bolt or or what type of steel. The bolt will be composed of you know, in these particular joints you know, because you need to make sure that the bolt is tough enough you know, to act as a support of this two or a, a what you, not support a, a, a joining uh, a material you know, to join these two metal plates right another way, way is to use uh, rivets you no know, uh, you can use rivets using a rivet gun it can be a uh, the the rivet gun uh, is something that uh, is commonly used in a bridge you know, bridge or or uh, uh, what you call this uh, they are used on uh, creating ships you no know? uh, they use the rivet connection so that it it's, it's properly attached okay? um Another way is to weld it. No, there are different types of weld. We have the butt weld, fillet weld, and the lap weld. The fillet weld, you just weld on the surface of the metal or the steel. It's called the fillet weld. Another type of weld is the full penetration weld. 
the full penetration weld is you uh, weld it up to the other side of the metal. So it's full welding. Then we have also the partial penetration weld. You do not weld it fully. You partially weld it and you, do not, you are not meet the, the weld on the top and the bottom doesn't meet. So that is partial penetration. There are other terminologies that you can, uh, you will observe in, in, in uh, what they call in types of welding, we have the CJP or the complete penet joint penetration, which is the full weld. And we have the partial joint penetration, you know? Okay, so we have also the fillet weld. I have, I have uh, uh, explained uh, uh, on the first slide. So that is the fillet weld. So this uh, fillet weld, you just fill the weld, the, this, the surface of the metal. The uh, PJP, the partial penetration weld, you, you partially penetrate the metal. You know? And the complete, you penetrate the metal you know, up to the knee, uh, other end. No, so you need to inspect the welding. You, you need you need to have an, a system to inspect the welding because the joints uh, using bolts and uh, 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 rivets are are uh, uh, done can can be seen visually if they are tightened or not properly attached in case of rivets. But in welding, how can you know if the welding is full? fully weld or partial welded. You need to create a visual inspection checklist. So there is a visual inspection checklist. This is the visual inspection acceptance criteria in that is commonly used no, in uh, checking the types of weldings. Okay? So there are, uh, now we will talk about the use of uh, steel you know, in our roof system because this is our topic using the steel in creating roof. So there are numerous advantages to using steel trusses instead of traditional wood trusses. But the main reasons are simplicity and strength. Because creating trusses made of steel is more rigid or more can last very a long, a long time compared to wood. No? Some prefer to use the metal truss, roof truss, because of the building of a structure is about is all about precision and metals, more precise measurement than wood. Because in in uh, ordering wood, you know, there are there is a what you call this a slight imperfection based on the quality of wood or the available uh, drying system of the wood or the available uh, 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 strength of the wood or the available uh, size uh, uh, of the wood no? but in metal it is formed no? the metal is is uh, formed by machine and forming these metals you can create a more accurate or precise measurement so trust this trust is extremely simple to install the steel truss is very simple to install and you never have to worry about rotting or deterioration from form from the weather prefabricated steel trusses offer a high strength lightweight roof system and can be installed very quickly. So the advantage of metal roof truss structures, even though they are considered the, to be more expensive, metal roof truss can span further than the wood. Okay? And metal roof truss can be manufactured to the exact standards. They are much more lightweight and this allows for large shipments. This reduces the time to takes to get uh, the project to get to the project site. Metal roof trusses are fire resistant and they are compatible with almost all types of roofing system. No insects infestation can occur because it's made of metal and insects cannot eat metal and chemical treatment are not necessary to maintain the trusses. But you need, you also need to put what you call this a primer if you want to paint the steel. So metal roof trusses are recyclable and therefore environmental friendly. So skilled labor in the disadvantage of metal roof trusses, you need a highly skilled labor to install the metal roof trusses. And metal roof trusses allow sound, sound to be more easily transmitted because of the, the uh, um, metal borne no? metal borne sound. And when the metal is cut, drilled, scratched, or welded, trust can become a problem. No? And the workers have a higher risk of electrocution when installing the metal roof trusses. 
So the, these are the different types of metal. These are the different shapes that you can create, no? uh, or different systems that you can create in trusses. Okay. So this uh, you you will uh, what you call this. You can select the different designs depending on the purpose of the roof or depending on the design of the roof. Okay. So. So we also have the quadrangular roof trusses used for large spans, you know, such as auditorium, uh, sheds, or, or uh, terminals, airport terminals. And we use gasset plate you know, for the connections of trusses. So gasset plates are usually either made of cold rolled or galvanized steel based upon the use. Gasset plates are used for various structures and gasset plates are used to connect beams and columns together or to connect truss members. They can be either the only way of connecting the beam and columns or they can be used with bolts and welds. So you can see in the illustration, they use a flat you know, gasset plate and you bolt or weld or uh, uh, rivet the members or the steel section to this gasset plate so that it can connect to the other steel sections. Okay, so this is a section of a steel roof truss showing the gasset plate. It shows the top cord, the bottom cord, the web members, the king post, the C pilings, the roof sheets, the ridge shawls, the uh, rafters, uh, and the, the and it's it's uh, attached using a gasset plate and there's a base plate and there's a anchor bolt. Okay, so. The trusses are, are anchored by a bolt. No? So it's not wrapped by a wire. No? It's anchored no? by a bolt inside the, the bolt is embedded on the beam or on the screw reinforced concrete beam or a steel beam. So there are different materials that we can use for, for roof sheeting. We have the galvanized iron sheets and we have the Galvanized iron sheet that are corrugated. So from a from a plain sheet, they they put corrugation or they put bending to create you know, different designs. Like this one, you know? they have the rib type, the corrugated type. They have the they, they sometimes they have the style roof depending of the Spanish style design depending on the supplier. So how do you attach a roof? Material to the to the roof system or the truss, you need to use J bolt. You know? This is how to use the J bolt. You know? uh, there, there is a uh, nut on top of the J bolt, and you bolt it on a angular. Uh, what you call this? This is the uh, pilings, you know? or, or this is the uh, bolt, and it's angled to a concrete uh, in a wood pilings. You know? And another one is using a, a screw. You know? You screw the the metal sheets to the material that you use for the trusses, like a wood. In, in case of a wood, you can use a wood uh, uh, a screw, uh, tech screw, you, uh, and screw it to a, uh, a wood pilings. You, know? you can also screw it to a metal uh, uh, beam or an angular C pilings. And uh, uh, in in uh, in locating the screw. In case that it is a corrugation like this one, you do not put the screw on the valley. You put the screw on the ridge or the top, the upper, the, the upper part of the corrugation, so that water will not penetrate into the screw. Because you cannot seal this because this is bended and this is flat. You can you will create a, a space from the the the, the head of the screw and the metal sheets. So how to do it? You put it on the top of the ridge of the bend. So this one, there will be no water on this area because it will flow down here and it will flow down here and it will flow uh, on the other side. So there will be no water on this area. So this is the correct way to put the screw. Another one, if you are using a ridge type, you can put the screw here because this is a flat area and the uh, the bottom part of the screw is also flat. You know? So then you can just only put sealant and you will prevent the, the leak going to the uh, inside of the sealant. So, 
uh, in the properties of a structural frame, so in design, uh, you can create large spans with columns and, and of small sections. So that is the main property of structuring. You can create gate building heights and high load bearing capacity. No? So there, there is a big advantage in a structural frame. In construction, the fabrication and erection of components, that it has shorter construction time you know, and close dimensional tolerances because of the material of steel. You know, it's, it's, uh, the, it's highly accurate. You know? uh, in ease of fixing and cladding because it's made of metal and the cladding is also made of metal and, and it's easy to fix it. And erection of independent of independent of weather condition, no? so it, it's it's very fast to construct this type of uh, material. But in, in cases that there are rains, no, you cannot weld during the rains. But if you will be using bolt, you can use you can bolt it during, even on rainy days. No, there are there are many ways to to uh, uh, to to make the construction time faster using a steel frame. So it's modest demand of space on the site. You don't need too much space because you don't, you will not use gravel and sand and, and cement, and you will not use formworks no, for forming the columns and beam. Uh, it uses dry construction because it eliminates the, the wet no, part of construction, which is the concrete. Uh, properties in structural frame, it's greater flexibility, as you can see in the design. In limited to number of internal supports, so so you can design something that doesn't have a support in the middle, and increase effective life of the building because of the metal. So the metal has a greater lifespan than the steel and than the, the concrete. Is in dismantling or demolition, no? uh, because it's very uh, flexible and, and you can reuse the material. So the application of uh, these uh, steels, that you can use this in different parts of the structure. You know? uh, as you can see in the design, you can the steel is also in unity with the roofing system. You know? It's it's one one member, the, the the column and the roofing system. It's one member. Okay? So there are different uh, panels that are, that can be used in steel. You can see this is uh, the panels. That they use in this area. We can use a double skin with a, a skin uh, with metal here and a metal on the bottom part. You can use a, a strotec roofing. You can use the, this is a deeper type of roof, single rib, but we have a uh, insulation uh, at the bottom that um, uh, attached to the uh, the sheets. This one is attached to the sheets of polar SR roof. This is the PR roof. So we have also wall panels no, in a wall system. And you can use the structural frame of the building to support the bridge screen, as you can see in the drawing. And this is a sample of a, uh, uh, what you call this, a, a uh, drawing of a roof. No? As you can see in the roof plan, no, it's a hip roof. No? As you can see, it's a hip roof. But you, can, you, you, you notice that the angle of the, the uh, truss is 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees. No? This one is 45, this one 45, 45, 45, to make sure that the corrugation is uh, meets its other at the top, you know, so that the corrugation is its other. But you can, you can the, the, the angle of 45 can vary. You, know? uh, it's not, you cannot perfect the 45 degrees. Sometimes it's 46, 47, sometimes it's 42 or 40 degrees. Uh, uh, but uh, it's more advisable to use the 45 degrees to create a more uh, what you call this uh, uh, hip type of roofing. So this in this type of roof, they use a hip type with another hip type on front. No? So, and we have a, a gutter or a flat slab no? uh, that uh, holds the water of uh, coming from the roof system. So this is the section, uh, they using the whole truss for this uh, section. So the truss uh, length is about 13 meters. The height of the truss is about 2.3 meters plus minus. So this is the, the section. So this is how to draw the section of a, a truss system. And then you draw the section of the sagrad, uh, draw the section of the different details of the truss uh, connection. Okay? okay, so thank you. That's end our lecture.
question, but 